We interrupt your program. This is a public service announcement. There are all types of psychopaths. Repeat, all types of psychopaths in the world. It could be your best friend, relative, or someone you least expect. So be on the lookout. The only advice I can give you is, don't fuck with them, because the motherfucker's crazy and dangerous. In case you have any trouble identifying one, here's a few examples of some crazy motherfuckers. Yo, you see big O's in the house with your god home, boy. I got the mind of a psychopath. Yeah, I see Mark chilling with your half home, boy. I got the mind of a psychopath. And chill, you over there with your god home, boy. I got the mind of a psychopath. Chill it, D, I see you with your half home, boy. I got the mind of a psychopath. And my man, man, Grandmaster Spray. Tell him what you got, home boy. Mind of a psychopath. What about you, P? Tell him what you got, home boy. Man, I got the mind of a psychopath. Flip the pages, fuck the glory Whatever you heard, forget it, this is the real story I could a motherfucker change so quick I don't but know he was cool until he fronted on your dick yeah. Now you got a gag in your hand If you kill him, would that make you a real man? Hell yeah! He said fuck it, so you shot him Three days later, police said we got him They chased your ran, fake shaped and baked him Couldn't catch shoes and another man and said Let's take him So you laugh, cause you know it ain't you Innocent man to sell 182 So you roam the streets with your gag Crazy motherfucker, tell it this is what you lack GMS, murdering ain't shit I just break in your house, he make your father watch while your mother sucking so my dick you, life is just a game, one in every city So what, bitch, I changed my name Oh man, that? that's the mind of a psychopath I got some for your ass, dumb motherfucker Mind of a psychopath I got some for your ass, dumb motherfucker Mind of a psychopath The mind of a psychopath has got to be me I'm crazy as fuck, my name is Chili D Nigga, I'm quick with the trigger Rufus is fucking his dope, I deliver Fuck your man No chances, first mistake's your last A psycho nigga like me kicks your ass I got fucked, what do I do? Get on the telly and call up my crew Yo, what's happening? Grab the gas grenades and come on through Motherfucker, the end of you We untouchable, we don't take no shit P, I'm out of bullets Yo, here's another clip I'm on the mission, ready to kick some ass The punk owes me money, and I'm mad Nigga, pay or die you punk sucker, you never get by I'm like a terrorist, but from the streets A fast way to end your life Fuck with me! Yo, man, that's the mind of a psychopath Mind of a psychopath Mind of a psychopath Mic check, mic check Look a nigga fuck up on the ground, don't face me It's hella funny I love shooting nigga running, I'm cracking a white one and hit for the fuck of it. Stick my gat in face and make him kick it, and that's the way I act. And the motherfucking untouchable, yeah, we got your back. Where I go, I start shit. I tell my motherfucker, I wonder where your life will end. This is it, and I hope you try to get up. You wanna get. I'm gonna let this track ride out, y'all. What's going on? What's going on, AFC? What's happening? What's happening? I'm gonna let this track ride out. It's only like a minute left. Take the sucker and won't give a fuck. I bought a little monkey ass. My 12 gauge in his fist, then blast. Then his brain start flying. The O is in town, it's time for motherfucking start time. And when I'm done gigging, I sit back and laugh, cause I got a mind. I'm a, I'm a motherfucking psychopath. Now I could tell that was you. What's going on, uh, AFC, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy DJ Just J. I was listening and I was trying to figure out which one was you, but I could definitely tell that that one was you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got my guy Big O in the building. Big O, you want to say what's happening to the people? Oh, I forgot. I uh, let me unmute you. All right, Big O, what's going on, bro? Yeah, hey, hey. what's going on, man? All right, man. It's an honor to have you on here. And if y'all don't know, thank you. Yeah, if y'all don't know, man, Big O is actually a part of the very, very root of where No Limit got its start from, Richmond, California. We got a legend in the building, man. I am honored to have you here. I know it's been kind of a long time coming for us to have this conversation, so I appreciate you joining me. Oh, man, I appreciate you all having me, man. All right, so do you want to kind of give people, um, I guess, like an introduction as to who you are and kind of how you got your start, where you're from, and all of that good stuff? Um, well, I've been rapping for forever. Um, I ran into Percy, aka Master P, around 1990, 
through a mutual friend by the name of DJ Kim. And, um, but before that, I was in various groups. I used to be a DJ. Um, um, I sold, well, I didn't sell, but I, I used to, I used to make cakes and, and, and wraps in my room and give all the cakes to my friends. And no matter what I did, they thought it was funny. So I kept doing it and, um, just stay with it. And then, uh, Try to really uh, go into the studio and really do something kind of like Shore was doing. Okay, okay, yeah, definitely appreciate that. So, a lot of people know that um, this No Limit Chronicles recently came out. And, man, I got to right. tell you, like, a lot of people have had some mixed feelings about it. Some good, some, oh, yeah. some kind of not so good. And it kind of made me really think, like, you know, I was like, okay, like, there's because there's so many moving pieces to this particular story. And in my opinion, when I watched the first episode of it, it seemed like more than the story of where the company came from. It seemed like it was almost kind of like a biography of Master P right. just of himself. Right. So, you know, if, if you can kind of relate to those sentiments, you know, that's kind of what I got from it. Well, uh, well, uh, well what I got from it was pretty much a biopic. Um, you know what I mean? Um, it was basically his life story, you know, uh, as he wanted to put it. You know what I'm saying? That's that that whole no 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 limit chronicle thing is is how he wanted everybody to know about him. You know, none of us ain't gonna really know the real story unless you're there. Um, I just happen to be at the very start of it. Uh, of Molly Marek. So what I'm telling you is all real and it's all true. Okay, so if you would, kind of tell us where do you get started with this whole thing? Where does TRU start? Like, TRU, of course, is The Real Untouchables, which that's in the title. Right. So tell us kind of like how this whole thing kind of culminates. How does that even start? When do you meet Master P? How well, does that whole thing we, start? Once we figured, once we kind of put the pieces in a group together, DJ Grand to Scratch was the first one because he was with Percy before anybody. Um, then it came, then came me, then came a friend of Grandmaster Scratch named Chili D, then DJ Chill, then my cousin um, DJ Mark. Um, and then King George came, but first we had to tell him King George, and we first were going to be the untouchables, and then person we was all sitting around, we was like, no, maybe, uh, maybe the movie, the movie people might do us, so we changed it to the real untouchable. Okay. And that's how it got started. No one person started that group they got started by all the members that started okay and i apologize because some of i'll try to let you know like when the audio <laughs> yeah. i'll kind of let you know when the audio kind of goes in and out a little bit but i think we got the majority of what you said but i think why I, I had um issues hearing was the when you were naming the uh the members can you can you kind of tell us who the members were again okay the the original members is DJ grandmaster Sprat. <laughs> He was with Percy first before any of it. Then came myself, uh, a friend of DJ Grandmaster Scratch, Chili B, um, the guy who introduced me to Percy, DJ Chill, and my cousin, DJ Magic Mark. Okay, and I appreciate you reiterating that. And like I said, I'm sorry about that. You know, I know. You know, this whole internet no thing is a little bit new and, you know, we're trying to kind of work through some technical right. difficulties. So there you go. So you guys link up and this is uh, in Richmond, California, from what I understand, right? Right. This is in Richmond, California. So you're on the, on the, um, the, the No Limit Chronicle. Silk the Shocker said we were a bunch of guys from the neighborhood, but that's not true. Everybody in the group from all different parts of Richmond. And the store was in the specific side of Richmond. 
kind of like they call it San Pablo. It's kind of like on the outskirts of Richmond. So we wasn't just no guys from the neighborhood. Not that neighborhood and not the neighborhood the store was in. We was from all over Richmond. Okay. All right. All right. That's cool. So um, so you go from there and you guys link up. So you got some DJs in the group and some of the DJs can also rap and stuff like that. And um, from what I understand, um, one of the producers that kind of helped uh, put some of these projects together, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't uh, DJ, excuse me, yeah, DJ K. Lou have something to do with as far as like, like you guys having like the studio sessions and stuff like that? Yeah, K. Lou ain't a, ain't a DJ though. K. Lou is a, a straight R and B dude. Um, K. Lou is a musician. He's a musician first. He just happened to have a studio in his mother's garage. But K. Lou is, a, is an artist and a musician, and he had a um, he had a group called Kajamin. Mm -hmm. And they had a um, a, they put an album out on people or EP that had some success. So, um, um, K. Lou did all of the projects that Percy did in Richmond mostly. Okay. So, um, Percy had a relationship with K. Lou before I met, um, I met Percy. Um, DJ Grandmaster Scratch introduced Percy to K. Lou because Scratch lived down the street with K. Lou. Okay, okay, I'm with it. So, so you guys put this group together. You guys link up, and then you guys start uh, start recording. Y'all start making music together and stuff like that. Right. Well, when I first met Percy, he um, he kind of laid out a plan that he wanted to do. He wanted to do. He wanted to kind of mirror what Easy E at NWA was doing. He wanted to have his solo stuff. And then you want to have a crew of dudes that was uh, uh, that was pretty good with it when it came to the, the MC and the music and all that other stuff. Okay. And so you guys put out the uh, the first project. What was the uh, the name of that uh, the, of the very first project that you guys put together? The first song we ever did was "Mind of a Psychopath." Mind of a Psychopath, and that was the song actually we right. we started our, uh, the show out with just now. Right. Okay. Right. Let me see if I can get that album uh, artwork up real quick, so I can and let them take a look at that because you were gracious enough, <coughs> excuse me, to be able to send that to me actually. So what I can do is I can actually put that on the screen, let them take a look at that. So was the first project called uh, "Getaway Clean" as, as far as the album? The, yeah, the album came. Mind something about the time the album I was already gone. Uh oh, uh, it, it froze a bit. I'm sorry about that. Would you mind saying that one more time? I said, um, um, the the my, the getaway clean was the was the the album we were all supposed to, but I was gone by then. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. So let's see. But I'm still on it. Okay, and I think you had sent me a picture, if I'm not mistaken. With um, with, I think this was you and Master P had taken a picture together. Also, I think that's that's DJ Grandmaster Scratch. Oh, so that's DJ Grandmaster Scratch. Okay, okay, got you. Let me see right. and let me pull up. You guys had a group picture together that um that had some it was some writing on it. Let me see if I could pull that up. Yeah, that's the glossy. Right here. Okay. And that says the real untouchables TRU, and it has the uh, no limit logo down there. Which one are you on there? In that particular, I'm in the very back. <laughs> I'm in the very back. You can see like with my face in the top of my hat. Okay, okay, I see you. I see you, man. Young guys back then, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we was kids, man. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I'm, I want to show them something that you sent me when we originally connected, when we originally started uh, communicating. And it looks almost kind of like a like a flyer, like it was written on, like it was printed on paper. And it said... It was. And it said, No Limit Records, uh, 
let me see, brings you the, what the heck does that say? Hold on, let me pull it up on my other page here so I can eat this properly. It probably said Super Dope Project. <laughs> let me see if I can, boy, it's just this technology don't want to work today. But that's okay, it says uh, new rap group, The Real Untouchables, Oh, brings you the hottest new rap group, The Real Untouchables, The Super Dope Project, and it consists of, it said four songs, the first song being Mind of a Psychopath, the second one, I'm Dealing Keys, third one as Crooked Ass Law, fourth one, uh, Life Ain't Nothing But Bitches and Money. <laughs> yeah. 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 That sounds real weird saying yeah. that nowadays in the PC environment, huh? Right, right. Right. Man, right. yeah, but it was just like back then. It was kind of normal. Like that's just kind of how we talk. Man, it, it that's what we was on. Man, we was, we was trying to break into the music industry, and you know, um, we, the, them the kind of problems you had back then. Yeah, straight up. That's what's up. So, so let me ask you this: Like, so what was your history with TRU, and what made you, I guess, leave? I'm assuming that you made a choice to just leave and go and do something else. Right. Um, well, a lot of stuff. I was writing a lot of stuff, and I was writing a lot of stuff for person. Um, one of the problems I had was just creative differences. Um, if you listen to the entire no, um, um, Mind of a Psychopath EP, Mind of a Psychopath and Dilly Keith are the best songs. They sound, they're the most clean. The other two, it sounds like we're reading off paper, which we was, because it was rushed. I don't mind the work pace. But you have to, when you go to the lab, you need to be ready. And you can't just put anything out. And Percy would put everything out we did, no matter how I found it. And that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons why I left. It was, it was very, it was real rough. You know what I'm saying? So, and then he would, like this, this whole ice cream man thing. Mm -hmm. For instance, everybody in the bay know that's the loonies. That's the loonies brought that. If you own Drew Down first album, you know about the ice cream man. Everybody knew about the ice cream man. And shout out to Drew Down. Percy would do like that. That would that would like a song called like a sock song. Uh oh, hold on. It's it's break. It's breaking up a little bit. Can you uh, say that last part one more time? Sorry, it was breaking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh no problem. We had we had did a song called "Play Like a Saxophone." That same year, King T had a song called "Play Like a Piano." Okay. You see where I'm going? Yes, I. I yes. M mind of a mind of a psychopath comes from uh oh I didn't I didn't quite catch that you said mind of the psychopath comes from what um the ghetto boys mind of a lunatic oh okay see up now I've heard of the ghetto boys but I wasn't like that was kind of my era but I didn't really grow up on listening to ghetto boys so I wasn't real familiar with that okay wow yeah, so he would kind of borrow stuff from other artists, and that's kind of that was really frowned upon back then. It ain't so much now because like hip hop is all over the place. But back then, that was like a real, a real big no. And let me and me, let, and it still is to this day. Let me and let me tell you this because I'm sure that you can relate to this because. I remember back in the eighties, they had this thing called biting, and what biting exactly. was, what biting was was they say that you take a bite out of something and you leave the rest of it. So technically, right. any time that you would quote unquote 
borrow elements or borrow a name or borrow a picture or borrow a style that was considered to be like biting and that was something that was really right. frowned upon especially back in the break dancing days and the early rap days right. now it's a way to do it where you pay the artist you gotta put a compliment like incorporating it into your song and trying to create a way sharp way but the way he was doing it it was just a direct take from there and I'm gonna do it my own way. Mm. Yeah. Now these days, the, those lines get crossed constantly. Is that um? Uh oh. Artists, I mean, you get inspired, yeah, but you kind of. Mm -hmm. You kind of bring your own flavor, you know what I mean? Original flavor. Right. Yeah, I, I can agree to that. So, pretty much, like, you, you, you're pretty much saying, you know what, on my principle, I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, you know, like, hey, good luck to you. I got to kind of move on and do my own thing, essentially. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of the creative stuff. That was a part of it. The reason why... I left um, is because I moved on eventually get better. So I asked him for a contract. I was doing a lot of the writing for, for him. He gave me a contract. But time the businessman he became, that was the that he was in. Okay, hey, Big O, can, can I do something real quick, bro? Because I want to make sure I, I capture yeah. everything that you're saying. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, and I don't know how this is gonna work. It might cause my stream to lag, but do you mind if I if I leave leave your computer where it's at, and I and I call you, and we can talk on the phone, and I can plug yeah. you, in, and I can plug you yeah. in that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mute you on the stream yard. And then I'm going to bring you in by uh, phone. You guys are watching in the chat. Do me a favor and click that thumbs up. If you would, share the stream and let other people know that we're live. That would help me out quite a bit. So, matter of fact, I don't even know if I want to use this program. Where am I? Let me see. Let me just see if Hangouts is still there. I think Hangouts worked pretty good. Let me try that. So, y'all bear with me a moment. I'm going to try something a little new. And I'm going to see if we can keep him on the screen. We might not be able to, but let me see what happens. So let me... Damn, I should have hit the record button. All right, let's see. Let's go boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. See if I can make that work. Is the phone picking up? Okay. All right. Did it, did it ring? Yeah, it did. Were, were you able to pick? Were you able to answer it? No, I answered it and it kept ringing. Okay. Let me let me try it through my other app. That's okay. Give me just a moment. If you guys are watching stream, y'all bear with me just a moment. Let me get logged in here. Let's see. Because I want to make sure that we get this audio good. Matter of fact, I'll do it like this. Let's 
just do it like that. All right, we're gonna get through this. Let's see, let's hit save. Desktop, boom. Okay. All right, let me hang up with this uh, with this stream yard and I'm gonna try to call you in. So let's try it like that. Let's see if that helps a little bit. And then I can bring his picture in there. Here we go. And sorry about that, guys. Like I said, we're running into a little technical difficulty, but we're going to try to work this thing out. So let's go. Uh, Come on. Because we need to really be able to hear him. And a lot of what's being said is a little bit garbled until we can get this StreamYard thing working right. So let's try that. Right. can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you all right so what i did was i actually took a screenshot <laughs> of the picture that we were using for uh for the uh stream yard so i said you know what we could just use that so people could still see your uh your face there but it just won't be oh, okay it's exactly, all good exactly live it was like you were saying a lot of important stuff and it was just getting so hard to hear you as far as like the um like the the as far as like why you ended up leaving well, what the reason why one of the reasons why I ended up leaving is because, you know, like I said, I was doing a lot of writing, um, a lot of stuff on the Getaway Clean album, the the Danny You Can Banger, and some other stuff, verses and stuff that I wrote. No matter, and then on top of that, um, when we would do stuff, Percy would say he wrote everything, and that's never that's that that wasn't true. Everything you hear me say, or you hear every part. Of recording, you hear my voice on. I wrote it, no matter how good or how shown. I wrote it. Everybody wrote for themselves mostly, but I used to help Percy write because Percy would tell you he ain't no rapper. So um, he used to give me titles, and I would just write off of it. Um, that was one problem. And then, like I said, the the creative part, you know, borrowing stuff, borrowing other artists' stuff. I just wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? I thought we could if we sat down and took the time we could create some original stuff and some better stuff you know what i mean but better stuff than what we were doing but we would just do stuff and he'd be like all right man let's go to the studio and we go in there um about an hour or two and lay it down and it'll sound fucked up and he'd be like man i'm supposed to put that out we'd be like what mm. but um that was one of the problems that i didn't like and then when i when, he, when i asked him for a contract he gave me a contract, but it was like a, um, it was like a copy or a ditto of a, of, a, of a contract. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, I'm 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 cool. So he didn't like it when I left because me and him were were really kind of tight, kind of cool. You know what I mean? And um, he was always talking about he wanted me to do a solo album. He would, every time he would get me by myself or to the side, he was like, man, man, oh, we gonna do it. I'm gonna do a solo album on you. So just get ready. Um, and when he, he did the, 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 the whole, when you add up all the different stuff, I just, I just wasn't, like, I just wasn't with it no more. And then the, the group had fell apart. Everybody started to, uh, go their separate ways. Grandmaster Scratch House ended up burning down. So he left. Chili D left because him and Percy never got along from day one. He would always challenge Percy on everything we did and they would argue and it'd be straight crazy. Um, and then everybody else had their own reason for leaving, but my reason for leaving was for the, mostly the creative part. And, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, the businessman he became, he was nowhere near that then. But again, we was all kids, you know what I'm saying? We just came together to make some music to try to, uh, um, you know, at the time, our minds didn't go no, no further than girls and cars and all that other wild stuff. But uh, uh, Percy was on a mission, and we none of us really knew it. It was really do or die for him to uh, to do what he did. So a lot of people don't understand that 
Percy, you, if you, for you to put it in real perspective, what he did, you had to be there, and I was, and I can tell you that he took, he brought no limit records from the mud. He didn't have nothing. The man wasn't working with nothing. They was living in back of the store. Him and Sonia, mm -hmm. and and Romeo. When Romeo was about one years old, was yeah, wasn't I no bathroom. Wasn't no kitchen. I mean, they was using the bathroom and like jars. I mean, dude came a long way. He y'all really don't understand. This man would take. This man had two cars, and they was both buckets. That man would have to take a battery out of one and put it in the other one so he could drive it oh, wow. to go um, get records from the distributor to put in the store. You know what I mean? This dude um, really brought um, No Limit Records a long, long way. Wow. And you know what? And I think that was part of like what they described in the, uh, right. in the Chronicles. So at least that was close to accurate. Right, right. A lot of it was. A lot of it was, you know what I mean? But the part, a lot of things that Percy left out is, is we all brought Percy, gave Percy that Richmond game that you're going to need to live in that town. Because you ain't, back then, you couldn't just move around and go to other people's hoods and stuff like that and just show up out the blue, you'll get killed. You know what I'm saying? You just couldn't do that. So we all, like I took him everywhere I went in Richmond, just so people can know who he is, just so he can see how the town go. Without us doing that, Percy would have never kind of integrated into Richmond like he did. You know what I mean? So a lot of that, a lot of the stuff that he got taught from us got left out. Mm. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't so much he, he went to Richmond and just got accepted. It, it don't, it didn't happen like that. You you gotta somebody gotta get you accepted. Although um, Sonia had family there, but he wasn't moving around Richmond. He wasn't moving around Richmond and dealing with the folks who buy rap music. You know what I mean? Or buy tapes or buy CDs or all that. The audience, you know, the people that we, the same people that we are. You gotta go into them them neighborhoods and to them sections of town that the, the average cat won't go in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, at that point, um, what what happens from there? Like, like, what do you feel like was inaccurate as far as like the beginning tale of what was told in the chronicles compared to what actually happened? Like, what do you what do you feel like was was inaccurate? What do you feel like was just nah that it didn't go down like that? It well, it was just a lot of it was. I mean, for the most part, it was. I can't say it was spot on because. I mean, you ain't gonna remember. You ain't gonna remember everything, and you only could get so much. Mm -hmm. Right, you only could get so much into that, that life. It's only gonna fit so much on screen. You know what I mean? So it was just the little stuff, the 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 the, the bonding that we did because we hung out. You know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of we did a lot of we well, we didn't do a lot of shows, but we did a few shows around town. We did some appearances here and there with the um. Because Percy had to deal with the music people who was the distributors in the Bay Area, we got the chance to rub elbows a lot of different people, and um, just the just the little stuff, the shows, the uh, the way that PRU came along, the way it was the way it came together, it just didn't come together just out of the blue. It kind of took a it kind of took a few months for us to get everything together. It took a even. Um, a little while longer to kind of start doing writing sessions and getting creative together and bringing it all together. So it just didn't happen just instantaneous. Okay. So um, let's see. I'm trying to kind of figure out how I want to ask this. As far as, far as he eventually made an exit from California and went back to New Orleans. And right. So and and I could also tell you this because I don't know if you're familiar with uh with Tobin Costin with TC or you've at least heard about no. him. No. So one of the things that he shared with me cuz I got a chance to talk to him because he kind of came in after that particular period after the Richmond period of his time period of kind of getting TRU and No Limits started. <coughs> 
And one of the things that he shared um, in his interview was he was talking about how a lot of the stuff that he was continuing to kind of put out was was a, was a bit rough. It needed a lot of polishing. You know, it kind of needed right. like a better um, execution strategy and things like that, which is part of what TC ended up doing really, really good at. You know what I'm saying? But right. I guess what I'm kind of curious about as far as like your story or as far as like what you know, like, like how do people view him in um in Richmond as far as in that time period compared to like when he left? I mean, was there any bad blood? Was there any bad thoughts? It was all good? Or what what do you think about that? Oh, it's a little bit of everything. Some people love him. Some people really don't care. <laughs> Some people hate him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's a it's a mix. It depends on who he dealt with and how he dealt with him. Um but for the most part um, it's he got a he got love in the, in Richmond still. You know what I mean. Percy got love a lot a lot of places. You know, dude is a his fans are diehard. You know what I'm saying. So you can't really take that away from him. But in Richmond, it it it, it just, just depends. Now in Oakland, it might that's a totally different story. You know, with that whole ice cream man thing. Now Oakland, that's different. Okay, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he was too much liked about that you can, know what i'm saying can, so can you can you elaborate a little bit more about about that whole oakland thing okay well i wasn't i wasn't uh when the, the, the when that thing had jumped off in oakland i wasn't with them so we had been to oakland many times before and nothing had never happened so um i can't really tell you about that but as far as the ice cream man because that's a oh that came out of oakland and that got a lot to do with oakland and him kind of taking it and running with it like he made it up. Now, it may be some cats in Oakland that got a problem with that. But overall, in Richmond, like I said, some people love him because he brought attention to Richmond. He brought, he put the spotlight on Richmond. He he did that, and he wasn't even from Richmond. Um, so a lot of people got love for him to that. And, you know, he gave a lot of dudes opportunities. You know what I'm saying? He gave dudes jobs. He gave... Uh, um, guys, like, if it wasn't for him, I would have never went to the studio. You know what I'm saying? He he put me in the studio. He believed I was good enough to uh, to go in. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm always owe him that. You know what I'm saying? So I never could just sit up and shit on him because I would never do that. You know what I'm saying? Even when I didn't agree with him, I was still loyal to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, um, but... And then, you know, and I don't have no hard feelings towards him. You know what I'm saying? I, he surprised me where he took it, but um, I'm, you know, it ain't no hate. It ain't, you know, I wish I would have stayed. I'd have did the same thing over again. You know, it ain't no hate. It ain't no hate. It ain't no, uh, you know, no disgruntlement. None of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't got the, I don't got the the perfect life, but I got a good one. But um, yeah, it just depends on who you ask, man. You know, you know, I think. Um, me personally, I think he owed Richmond, the streets of Richmond, something. You know what I'm saying? He since he left, he ain't never been back. Now, why why um, do you, why do you think he has not been back to Richmond? That's actually a good question. Um, somebody, I mean, it it you have to ask him. I can't answer that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I could sit up here and say the reasons why I think he ain't been back and be totally wrong. I could probably give you a hundred reasons. They all be wrong. You know what I'm saying? So you have to ask him or somebody close to him. I don't know why he ain't ever been back, you know, but I know a lot of people that leave Richmond that don't come back. Um, they don't come back because they can't. That's just people that, uh, you know, I know he he's masterpiece, so it might be different. But um, um, you, you really have to ask him. But he hasn't been back to Richmond since. Okay. Okay, and... um. So overall, you pre you felt pretty comfortable as far as like the way I guess TRU and its origins were described. I mean, but you definitely feel I felt like you filled us in what you know with some details that we definitely didn't know. But overall, you felt like it was you know it was about as, as about as good as you could you could hope for as far as telling your well, uh, yeah because I knew I knew they wasn't gonna bring us in. You know, I already knew that because like I said, Percy wanted this story told a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you know him, then you know what I'm talking about. So, um, um, he wanted this told a certain way. Um, having all us on there, that that's giving up too much game. 
So we, we, you know, so I knew that I wasn't going to be on there, and I, I really don't got a problem with that because I, ain't, I ain't thirsty for fame. But, um, but uh, yeah, this this story got told how he wanted to tell it, and I knew once he told it, it was going to go exactly kind of how he wanted to tell it because it's a lot of stuff. You know, it was, when, he, when in the early days, man, it was a struggle, and and who wants to relive that? You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. It wasn't when it was a, when I say a struggle, it was a real one. So you know that may be one of the reasons why he he don't come back to Richmond because he it was he was living through some hard times. You know what I mean? Trying to figure it out because remember we all kids mm -hmm. and trying to make something work that you don't know if it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So um, I look back and that dude was under a lot of pressure back then because you know you got a, a wife, you got a son, and you got a baby on the way. You know what I mean? So, um, and him trying to make it with that record store, I mean, it was a cool little record store, but people wasn't running in and out of there like that. You know what I mean? So, right. he was barely making it. We all was. Yeah. Most of us were still living at home with moms. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it was it was rough, but, we, but, but the most important thing is that we had a lot of fun hanging out together and making that music. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so once you left, did you continue to kind of stay uh, involved in music? Yeah, once I left, I, um, I had went and seen K. Lou, and I asked him to teach me everything he knew. And at that at that time, K. Lou started to get noticed, started to get popular. His studio started to get popular, so more and more people started to go to him. So he didn't really show me nothing. So I went to school to learn how to be an audio audio engineer. And now I can walk into any lab and and get down. Mm, how about that? It's a very it's a very important thing too. Matter of fact, there's a lot of guys that's making a whole lot of money that that be behind the scenes just doing all of them pushing all them buttons. Right. So I wanted to learn the recording industry from the inside out, for especially from the recording side. So that's why I went to school to become an audio engineer, and then I started. I started. I had to record for for. I had to record for uh, for grades. So so um, I started recording. I started using that that time to record my album. So I did an album in ninety three called In Gangster Mode mm -hmm. uh, that I never released. That I'm about to release. Oh okay okay. So it ain't never been heard. It's about. 17 songs and a couple of shorts on there. Nobody's never heard it. Only a few people have heard it. Um, I got some some I got some early cats from Richmond. I got uh, in too deep from North Richmond on it. Um, I got my 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 guy Little T from East Oakland on it, and um, it's some real real live gangster shit from 1983 that I didn't drop. And then I, got, I did another album in '03. Um, called Mac Maneuvers, and um, I'm about to release that too. Yeah. Okay. And here's here's what I've been doing with pretty much everybody that we brought on here to kind of give us kind of the, the chronicles and kind of tell their stories no matter where they fit into that timeline. Here's one right. thing that I think is a great question that I think you will appreciate. If you could go back to that time period, what would you do different? Um, what would I do different? Um, I probably would have released all my music back then, um, that I was doing when I did it. You know what I mean? I probably would have released it then instead of now. Um, I kind of fell out of love with it. You know what I mean? Cause I, I have other skills so I could do other stuff, but I, I kind of fell out of love with it. So, um, I kind of would fall out of love with it and I'd get that feeling and then I'd go back into the studio so it kind of goes and comes with me. But um, um, because it's such a... Um, I take such a, a artist approach to it. So um, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it at the highest level I can do it at and it's going to be thought out. So um, I probably would would put out the albums that I did um, when I did them, mm -hmm. 
because when I left, when I left Percy and then he started to blow up, man, you should, all the people was asking me, man, you going to do an album? You going to do an album? So I did the Ken Folks project in 95. I did that with my, with my cousin, Kevin, the cool breeze produced most of it, but it was mostly a lot of us from Richmond. Uh, you got silky on there who, uh, who, uh, won the cut on MTV and she's, uh, on E-40 song, Lieutenant Roaster Batch. Everybody know who Silky, Silky is. She with the coop right now. Okay. Um, and some cats from, from Richmond called Mafiosos. And it was a cool compilation, man. And it, it did real real well on the West Coast, up and down. Um, and then I kind of I kind of just kicked back and just watched the game. Right. Well, yeah, man. Um... Other than that, like, I think that pretty much kind of uh, answers, like, a lot of what I thought as far as, um, and, I, and I definitely appreciate you taking the time. I know this has kind of been a long time coming for us to to have a conversation right. about this and had a little technical difficulties, so a few things we had to kind of kind of work through. But um, do you do you want to kind of give us any, uh, any closing thoughts? You got any uh, other projects coming out? Anybody you want to promote or anything like that? Well, I just did an interview last night with most of the guys that was, some of the guys that was an original TRU and some of the guys that replaced us. And um, we just did like a, a Richmond round table of artists, me, my, uh, myself, uh, Chili Powder, um, G, uh, Cali G, um, Little Rick, if you know, uh, if anybody know anything about West Coast Bad Boys, Little Rick is on that. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, we we chopped it up and talked about all the old stuff. King George was supposed to be on there, but he wasn't. And um, um, check them dudes out. All them dudes is uh is coming with music. Little Rick just did a song with a a Richmond legend. Um, by the way of uh of Magic Mike. Um, um Chili Powder got projects coming. DJ Grandmaster Scratch got projects. And uh, and um, so do Cali G. Look them dudes up. If you want to know the real story of uh, of No Limit, look up King George. I know he got a project or something in the oven. And like I said, I got in Gangsta Mode. I'm about to drop. Um, I'm gonna drop my other album. Um, uh, Mac Maneuvers. My first single is um, Bay Lace. That's gonna be our next month on all platforms. Okay. Um. And just 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 keep looking. We might you might see a a project come out of um you might see the original no um the original TRU get back together and do a project. Now that would be really really cool right there. And I I know that you have a collective of people that would absolutely be excited about that. Me myself included. But definitely make sure you uh just keep us in the loop on just anything you got going on. But you but you know how to reach me and man I want right. to thank I want to thank you for just taking the time and just being patient with me and coming on. Oh man, no problem. I, I'm like I said, I'm 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 honored that you had me on, you know, to tell my story. You know what I mean? So people know, you know, all the No Limit fans, you really want to know how I really got it started. Where you, how your boy, you need to check out. Like I said, check out Grandmaster Scratch, check out Cali G, check out King George. You know, check out Chili Powder. Chili Powder got a, a boatload of work. Check him out. He on all platforms. YouTube. Put it in. Look it up. Um. And uh, just look for look for some original TRU stuff to be coming. At least from if we don't do it all together, it's going to be separately. But I'm trying to get I'm trying to get everybody together. I'm in contact with everybody, so I'm trying to get everybody together on my new project because I got another project coming. It's going to be all fresh new stuff, and uh, I, I want the original TRU at least on two songs. Okay. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. And um, do you have a a place where you want people to uh, to follow you at? Um, I got a um, I got a YouTube um, called No um, MC Big O No Limits Original um, Original Soldier. I'm about to start loading content up on that. Okay, perfect, perfect. So and, um, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna set up an IG because it's starting to get kind of popular. It's starting to you know it's starting to you know, all these interviews is coming from all over the place. Man, yeah, for real. And IG is evolving, so yeah, definitely. It's right. definitely be a good right. thing to do. 
All right, man. Well, I want to thank you for your time. And like I said, man, you need anything from me, just let me know. But other than that, I appreciate your time, brother. Man, I appreciate you, bro. I really do. And and, and uh, y'all check everything out I said. All facts, man. All right. Have a good night. You too, man. Thank you. All right. Peace. <laughs> All right, guys. We were able to I hopefully get some good audio. If you guys were able to hear that, make sure and let us know. And uh, But I definitely want to give a big shout out to Big O, MC O, MC Big O, you know what I'm saying? And thank him not only for kind of giving us um, his story, but kind of giving us more insight as to um, the the intricacies is the word that I'm looking for of how No Limit formed. And like I said, you guys know I'm a DJ first and I'm definitely a huge music fan and a huge No Limit fan. And I want to thank him as well as the original TRU and really just continuing to keep this thing going. And just continue to look for more interviews coming from us, guys. And if there's anybody that you guys want us to look uh, to look up or anybody you want us to uh, to talk to, now, I know he gave us some great suggestions. I know people have asked about King George. That will probably be really interesting. But if there's anybody that you guys want to hear about or hear from, just let us know. And if you guys have any questions for, uh, for Big O, make sure you post it in the comments section. We will make sure that he has a link to this so he'll be able to respond. Make sure you guys follow his YouTube channel and all of that good stuff. You guys have a great night. And I'm going to end you guys out with a song that he uh, was on called Survival of the Fittest. You guys have a great night. Have a good night. And we'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. For some skrill of mine, young son of cocaine Cause in this game, shit gets deep Don't live on the streets, don't keep a glock and play for kinks Or rest in peace, sitting and shaking on the ground Knock, 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 with a sound that laid him down Now crowd around, and view the body on the ground Don't wanna block, but got caught by 17 rounds Pound for pound, kitty kitty, hustles wanna be 
a diva while up in the cemetery sniffing berries I'm getting deeper to my thoughts, can't take the pain Cause in this game and I lost a lot My kids have got shot on the block Bill, bring them to the Glock, man, when will it ever stop, man? Death on the block And I'm a witness to a homicide, witness to my homie die Witness to his mother cry Nigga, who ride for the funk? I'm gonna bring it to you cause that's what the fuck you want No love, nigga, nigga